Which method is the best way to pack a suitcase? Today, I'm going to compare each way that you can pack your travel wardrobe. I am comparing the KonMari folding method, packing cubes, folding versus rolling, and the army roll or ranger way. Some of these methods will be quicker than the others. Some ways will help you be more organized in a carry-on suitcase. With any of these methods, you are going to be more efficient in packing a suitcase. At the end of this video, I will give you three main tips that help after comparing these packing methods. I'm a Houston Pilot Wife sharing tips to help you travel the globe without a worry in the world. Hit the bell and subscribe so you will never miss a free weekly travel tip video. This video will be a very detailed comparison of each packing method. So so grab a cup of coffee and maybe a shirt and you can practice with me for packing in a carry-on suitcase. Choose your method that fits your personality and your time frame when planning for a trip. In today's video, we're going to compare different ways to pack that you may benefit from. <laughs> you are the only reason that you will be choosing a packing method. Over the years, I have tested the rolling method versus folding my clothes when I plan for a trip, and I timed the two methods, and folding is actually faster for me. With the rolling method, I just take my t-shirt and I fold it in half lengthwise, and then I start rolling down. A travel tip is to make sure that roll is tiny, as tiny as can be, but my shirts do not start out perfectly pressed or um, ironed. They have some wrinkles to them anyway, so I do think that rolling um, might increase your wrinkles if there are also, or if there are already pre-existing creases in your tops or your shirts. But the same can be said with folding clothes if you're really strict about not wanting any wrinkles. With the rolling method, I just pack each roll nestled in beside each other one at a time. And to fold my shirts, I just grab the shoulders and I flip the sleeves back and then I just fold it in half lengthwise so that it is a rectangle shape. And for me, as a five foot eight inch size 10 woman, that fits in a cube or in my suitcase, the width wise from here to here. Another way you can pack is with compression cubes or packing cubes. I was very skeptical of packing my clothes in a packing cube. So I purchased a very inexpensive set to start with and those worked fine for five years. You may see some packing cubes at like TJ Maxx that have these little wires around the perimeter of the cube, but I do not prefer those. I feel like they're cheaper. I prefer structure in any kind of packing cube, but I also like to be able to smush and squish them. In a compression packing cube, you unzip it, put your clothes in from the top, and then zip it up, and then there's another compression zipper that compresses the air in between your shirts or bottoms or any part of your travel wardrobe. And then in my suitcase, I have more space because the space was emptied up. <laughs> Like I said, I pack shirts that can be wrinkled a little bit. And then when I get to my hotel room, I'll hang up those blouses that need to be straight or I usually unpack my clothes and just fold them in the hotel drawers. Some passengers like to pack all of their tops in one cube. They like to pack all of their bottom pieces in another packing cube. They will give a different family member a different color of packing cubes to help them be more organized when packing. Notice that when I fold my shirts and pack them in a packing cube, I'd like to drop them in from above. Yes. Okay. Now that Ollie is comfortable, I can tell you that when you are comparing packing cubes, here is my advice. I got this set of compression packing cubes because I feel like I can fit more in my suitcase, but they only open two thirds of the way. So I purchased two more of a different set that open all the way so that I can drop in my clothes. This set and then another one that I tested only came with one large cube. This set that I bought comes with two large cubes and that's really what you need when you're setting up your packing cubes. They need to carry all of your clothes and they need to fit inside your suitcase. And if you only have one large one, then it doesn't really help you any, I don't think. I figured out on one of my trips that I can actually stack the compression cubes. So now I can fit like three large ones in there by stacking them. I have not noticed any difference between packing cubes and compression cubes with the amount of wrinkles that I have. I don't feel like there are more wrinkles when I get there anymore. You can also save this video to your watch later library by clicking on the three dots underneath each video and then click watch later. 
Marie Kondo's KonMari fold method is a different way of packing in that you do not stack your clothes. Give me grace because I am not her. I am not tidy in any way. <laughs> I will link her video down below so that you can listen to her music and just her voice is so relaxing and her method is just magical. Marie Kondo's organizational order for your suitcase is to have your shirt and placed one behind each other in order. With this way of packing, you can see all of your clothes at a glance when you open your suitcase. Organizing her shirts by color or by outfits would be very easy to do with her KonMari fold method. Her packing method starts with picking a shirt that brings you joy, but let's remember that only God can give you joy that never wrinkles or fades or gets lost. <laughs> so here's my take on the KonMari method. Think rectangular. Everything you're going to fold is in the shape of a rectangle first. Lay that shirt out on a flat surface and press. You're smoothing out all of the wrinkled or the creased places. Fold one length to the middle, pressing it out, and then fold that one sleeve back and press. Every step you're going to press after you're done. I found out that pressing after every step is what helps you decrease the creases or wrinkles when you open up that suitcase at your vacation spot. Now you're gonna fold over that other length to the middle and press. Press back the sleeve and press. Then you're gonna fold down from the top about two thirds of the way press and notice that you are going to leave this extra edge about three inches long at the end of your rectangle. If you were built like Marie Kondo, fold your shirt over halfway of the length of that rectangle and then fold it over one more time all the way to the edge of the bottom of your shirt. If you have a longer torso like me or you pack bulkier t-shirts like I did in this first video of filming the KonMari fold method, you are going to need to fold it over twice before it reaches the end of your shirt. With her method, having that extra flap helps it stand up straight when you stand it up. <laughs> and then you're gonna do that to another shirt and just stand them up right behind each other. That would be great for drawers as well, but I really think this method is lacking in stacking. <laughs> but I think with the pouches and uh, bulkier items like pants, you don't, if you, especially if you're not using cubes, you can place those on top and it's not gonna crush that strong foundation of standing up tops or shirts. In Marie's book, she does say that she can roll pajamas or really thin pieces of fabric. So in a sense, she's using the rolling and the folding method just in a different way. I do think her method is a compact way of packing and that is helping you save space in a suitcase. I heard of this ranger roll method or the army roll method, probably my fifth video that I ever made about five years ago. And I don't know why I didn't try this sooner because it ends up looking like a cute little yummy burrito that I can have here in Houston. Both the army roll method and the Marie Kondo KonMari fold method. Oh, I'm getting tongue tied, tongue twisted. Blech. They both use a rectangular base. So that might help you in your choosing of which method is best for you. And in the similar way that Marie Kondo left that flap at the end, with the army roll method, you are going to leave a flap at the end, but the flap is going to be a fold. You can see here, if you lay out your t-shirt flat, you just fold up the open, the widest open space of your clothing. For a shirt, it's the bottom. So you're gonna roll it up three inches and make sure you pay attention to the end or the back of your shirt because here you see that I folded mine up and it looked like it was folded up into a flap, but in the back it had gone underneath itself. So make sure it's flapped all the way around. If you were using the army roll method with pants, you're going to use the widest opening, which is the waistband. And you're gonna fold the waist down about three inches. Then fold your sleeves in just to the seam. Then fold one length to the middle and with the other side, fold lengthwise, after you fold in the sleeve, across to cover that length of the shirt. For pants, you just fold across all the way to the other side, making a long rectangle. Now you're gonna start at the opposite end of the flap and start rolling as tiny as you can a roll to go all the way up that length of the rectangle. A packing tip for the army roll method is to make sure that roll is tiny because if you don't, it's not gonna be any different than just a simple rolling method. 
One of your hands is going to be on the roll and then the other hand is going to be on the rectangle side. The hand that is on the rectangle side, every couple of rolls is going to push that rectangle away from the roll while the hand on the roll is pulling on that roll to make it tinier each time. As you lengthen that rectangle side, you're going to be also smoothing out any creases or wrinkles that you see along the way. Your goal here is to just make that roll as tiny and compact as you can. And you're gonna roll all the way to the very end of the flap. Then you hold it up like a candlestick and your right hand or whichever one you're dominant in is going to grab the fabric from behind. So you're gonna grab the fabric from behind and flip. It's almost like you're twisting that over the top part of your candlestick. You're gonna make sure it goes all the way around that top part of your candlestick. Then you can turn it like a taco in Texas or a burrito and do the bottom part or the leftover end cap. And then it looks like a burrito. I use three different fabrics of shirts. This one is like, it's got polyester in it. And then this white shirt, you've seen it before. It's a little more stiff, but it is 100% cotton. Um, it rolled up into the tiniest burrito shape. It was about seven inches. And then this blue one also is 100% cotton. And it rolled up in a smaller burrito than this pink colored shirt. I really thought this would roll up smaller because it is so uh, thin of a fabric, uh, but just test it out on your bed or your kitchen table <laughs> sometime. For your next vacation, I suggest making a packing list. I do have a video about how I choose my travel clothes and I am so proud of that video because I use different visuals as if I was teaching a class. So check that one out in the iCards or in the description box below. By using a packing list, you start out with fewer clothes. So you have a minimum amount that you're packing with, which will definitely help with whichever method you choose. Now that I've compared each packing method, I'm going to share three tips for your travel wardrobe. If you're packing in the winter, make sure you pack or wear cashmere type sweaters. Think colored denim, leggings, tops that are thin that you can wear over leggings and cover your fine china, by the way. One of my favorite packing tips that I just realized after almost 20 years of packing as a pilot wife and traveling all the time is to pack only one pair of jeans if you are traveling in the fall or winter, and then in the summer only pack two bottoms, and then make every shirt and top max mix and match with those bottom pieces. I wanna pack efficiently and making the most out of my space is important to me. So stacking would be very helpful for my method. I pack large t-shirts to lounge around in from the 80s and 90s style. And with the KonMari fold method, that just doesn't help me as much. I think if I practice, I would get better at it and quicker, thus being more efficient with my time, which is very valuable. <laughs> and I think if you were packing for a 10 day trip, the army roll method is the best way to go. And then also using packing cubes with those. But I'm just faster at folding clothes like I'm doing laundry and putting them in a cube or in my suitcase. So that's the one I feel most efficient with. Let me know down below if you have tried any of these methods and which one you feel faster with and which one now you feel more confident in trying. And don't forget to say hey if we haven't met yet. Thank you very much for your time. I know you have options of people to watch or articles to read and I appreciate you stopping by.